Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Digital Home Thoughts. And this is a different kind of video for me because as, as you can tell, I'm uh, outside of my office. I'm not in my, I'm not shooting on my little photo table. I'm shooting actually in my kitchen. Uh, this is my review video of the M90Z, the Lenovo um, all-in-one desktop computer. And uh, I'll just do a little quick pan here, but uh, basically I set this machine up uh, in my kitchen. Uh, so this is, in my home, this is in my kitchen, and uh, I decided that I wanted to have basically a, com uh, a computer in the kitchen. So, kind of geeky, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here on the machine. It's kind of tricky to shoot in here, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have uh, too much glare, but I also needed to have enough light in order to uh, do the video, so that's why you see a bit of a reflection um, in the screen. So, this is the M90Z. As I mentioned, I had it set up in my kitchen here uh, for, it's, it's been about a month that it's been up here, and it's been really interesting watching um, the way I would use a computer in the kitchen, the way my, my wife uses a computer, and it's been fascinating watching uh, basically the, the, uh, the touch screen interface. So um, if you haven't already watched my unboxing video, uh, you probably want to go ahead and do that because this is of course a, a, a touch screen uh, computer. I will go over all the specs, but this is a very well equipped uh, machine. Uh, it has uh, 4 gigs of RAM, it has a 3.2 gigahertz uh, CPU, uh, it's an Intel uh, Core i5, yeah, so 3.2 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, it's running 64-bit uh, uh, Windows 7 um, Professional, I believe, yeah, Windows 7 Professional. Now, a slight kind of correction, on, on a previous uh, video, um, I had said that this had come with Windows 32-bit. Uh, it did, in fact, but Lenovo actually sent out a disk uh, to those of us that were reviewing it that would allow us to load up 64-bit uh, uh, Windows 7. Of course, what that means is that I'm able to access um, all four gigs of RAM um, on this on this system, which of course is hugely helpful. Okay, enough about that. So let's talk about, I guess, some some of the some of the practical um, implementations of using a touchscreen computer. So. What I have here, and this is going to be a little bit hard, hard to see because my uh, camera is um, exposing for the screen, but if you can kind of make this out, this is a Microsoft Arc keyboard. So as you can tell, it's really, really slender. Um, it gets it gets, a, it gets a little bit thicker up front here. Um, I, I, even though this is a touchscreen computer, I knew that I was going to need to have some sort of um, keyboard because Windows 7, you can't do everything without a keyboard. Sometimes you want to have a keyboard. So this Arc keyboard is basically the best thing that, that I could find. I'm just going to zoom down here a little bit and um, what you're going to see is that there's, there's, this little, there's this little space down here and the Arc keyboard fits in backwards. So if if I put it in like this, it'll actually fit in there uh, fairly snugly. Um, I can't jam it in all the way because then it starts to press the keys, but basically this has been kind of the best solution that I could think of in terms of having um, a real usable keyboard, uh, something that was wireless, and something that would kind of fit in with this whole design. I think it would be really cool if Lenovo actually came out with a, uh, a flip down keyboard, you know, some, something that, that would maybe hook into the bottom here and uh, would actually flip down and maybe when, when you flipped it down there'd be some sort of a uh, something that would actually turn on the computer. Anyway, I, I think there's some interesting ideas there. Uh, I also just have a, uh, a, a an HP wireless mouse here. What's kind of interesting is that even though we reach for the keyboard every now and then, we don't ever really have to reach for the mouse. So that's actually that's that's actually kind of cool. I, I like that. So. What do I think of the M90Z um, overall as a system? Uh, it is a really fast, really capable machine. I mean, with the four gigs of RAM and that 3.2 gigahertz Core i5, this is, it's a wickedly fast machine. I've never seen it kind of slow down or bog down. Now, of course, we're doing fairly simplistic things here. I mean, uh, you know, just as a, uh, as a typical example here, I've created some shortcuts down here for the weather, and so when, when we want to see the weather, we just kind of load it up. Now, this is um, Internet Explorer 9, the beta, and Internet Explorer 9 is actually uh, really, really touch friendly. So as you can see here, I, I can just use, I can use my finger to scroll. Um, if I want to, I can actually uh, zoom in on this page, make it really big, I can pinch, I can make it really small. I think two, fi yeah, two, two fingers basically kind of pops it to the next zoom mode. Now, my browser of choice is Chrome. Usually, 
Um, what's kind of interesting though, Chrome has absolutely no touch um, uh, interface as far as I can tell at least because when you do this with Chrome, you can see it, it, it thinks you're doing a selection. So Chrome from a touch uh, screen interface like on a touch computer is essentially um, completely useless. So um, Internet Explorer 9, uh, definitely for the win, it really works extremely well um, on here. A couple of other things uh, worth noting. I'm actually going to zoom in up top here because I want to show you something. So here's one of the issues. Um, with, with regular uh, Windows 7, these controls, okay, so the window controls up here are uh, too small. They're, they're, they're quite hard to hit and there's, uh, I'm not sure, yeah, I'll go ahead and I will try to show you this right after this quick break. Uh, just a quick note about benchmarks. Um, I forgot to put up the uh, PC Mark uh, Vantage scores. These th these are the PC Mark numbers uh, for um, Windows 7 Professional 32-bit. You can see the overall score is a 6103 uh, in in PC Mark numbers. But what's interesting is that when I switch over to the 64-bit system, you can see it jumps uh, from 6103 up to 6763. Uh, so that is um, well over a 600-point uh, jump, which is a really significant uh, boost in performance. And looking at the difference in um, the numbers, the communication suite is, is a fair bit faster. The productivity suite is a little bit faster. Um, strangely, the hard drive suite is slightly slower, but it's within kind of the margin of error. Um, the memory suite, though, is also a little bit quicker. What's the takeaway here? The takeaway, of course, is that if you have four gigs of RAM in your system, uh, you really want to be using a 64-bit operating system. You're going to be able to leverage more memory. And you're going to get uh, enhanced performance out of your system as a whole. And with RAM being as cheap as it is today, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use a system with only two gigs of RAM. Toss four gigs of RAM in your system, upgrade to Windows 7 64-bit, and you'll get a lot more performance and kind of bang for your buck. So there you go, a little bit on benchmarks and the advantages of using a 64-bit operating system. All right, and we're back. And uh, what I wanted to show you uh, was essentially uh, a, an optimization that you can use uh, with Windows 7. So you go in here, you go into uh, Personalize, down here under Window Color, and this is it's something that you would never guess you go into Advanced Appearance Settings, and then I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this because it's really important if you have a touchscreen uh, device. Under Desktop, you say um, uh, cap Caption Buttons. So Caption Buttons is the option. I'm just going to zoom up here a little bit, and you can see that as I increase this size, which is a little bit hard to do, you can see that the caption buttons are actually getting bigger and uh, I'm, I'm going to click apply and you'll see that the buttons are now even bigger. So now they're very big, they're very touch friendly and they are really uh, easy to manipulate. So let me zoom out here for a second. Now, uh, that tip came from uh, one of the Digital Home Thoughts editors, uh, Li Yuan Sheng. And, um, he is, uh, uh, th thankfully, he, uh, he gave me that tip and I found it to be really helpful. But what's not so great, of course, is that Microsoft didn't uh, make that easier to find or better yet, they didn't actually include some sort of a touch-friendly uh, theme. Now, let me show you uh, something else that's kind of interesting up here. This is one of the not so good things is that, um, so uh, this is Internet Explorer 9. It's easy to uh, flip between tabs but the little X right here that you would tap on to uh, to close uh, the browser window, um, it is not exactly the easiest thing uh, to to tap on. So I'm going to move I'm going to move a new tab over here. So now I have a new tab, and hopefully I can get it in the first try. No, nope, failed. There. So basically, that took me three tries to hit. Now, um, it is a little bit different because, of course, I'm, I'm standing up. I'm using my fingers to try to manipulate, you know, uh, the screen and the browser. But it is worth kind of pointing out that um, while there are some things, like for instance, like I said, Internet Explorer 9 is, is, is touch friendly. It's easy to zoom up and down. It's easy to, or sorry, move up and down. It's easy to zoom in and zoom out by doing the pinch to zoom. But again, there are just certain elements about the operating system uh, and about Internet Explorer 9 that are just not not that easy uh, to do uh, insofar as touch is concerned. So um, overall, 
getting back to, I guess, the M90Z as, uh, as a whole, um, the, uh, the large screen is, is great. Uh, it's really nice to have a big touch screen interface. Um, the touch screen, uh, um, it uses an infrared beam basically that actually is coming across here. And so if you hover really, really close to the screen, you can break the infrared beam without actually touching the screen. I've personally found that it's really not too bad. Like I, I feel as though I can touch it and have fairly accurate, um, you know, results. But uh, for some people, uh, depending on, on what the particular use is, they might have a little bit of trouble. Now, this uh, simple tap, which I pointed out in the uh, in the unboxing video, basically you, you tap this red button and it pops up here and it gives you some icons. Um, there are some people that are huge fans of simple tap. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I think it's okay. I think it's fine. But honestly, day to day, I find that I, I never really use this. And I mean, basically the reason why is just that the icons down here in the uh, uh, sort of the, uh, what's, the taskbar area, I guess, Windows 7, um, the icons are, are, are nice and big. You know, I'll, I'll just move down here and zoom in a little bit. The icons are actually pretty big. They're pretty easy to use. You know, if I, I want to fire up TweetDeck, I just tap on it and then, you know, boom, it'll, it'll, it'll basically start up here. I can move the window around. I feel like I can manipulate things on the screen, um, you know, really easily. And so I personally don't think the simple tap um, is, is that useful or that, uh, that meaningful uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of day-to-day -day use. Um, getting back, I guess, to the hardware, um, one of the things that I've noticed about the M90Z is that the uh, the speakers right down at the bottom here, the speakers are not very loud. Um, if I crank up the volume on this thing to maximum, I would say that it's it's barely usable in terms of, you know, if you're playing like a video or something, it would, it would be really nice if, if the speakers were a little bit louder. Now, again, this is an enterprise, you know, a corporate focused machine, so it's not that terribly surprising that it doesn't have decent speakers, but for my my particular scenario using this computer in the kitchen, I do wish that it had um, nicer speakers. But overall, um, I think it's a really uh, good, uh, useful machine. Uh, the touch screen um, is actually better for Windows 7 than I thought it was. I think initially when I when I shot this video, I was a little bit uh, dubious as to whether or not uh, Windows 7 was going to work fine. But basically, you can touch and hold to get a right click. and um, for most of the things that you do on the screen, the user interface is actually pretty good. Sometimes, you know, when, uh, when you're tapping and holding, um, sometimes it doesn't always pick, um, it doesn't always pick up properly. I, I did notice too, the on-screen keyboard, um, we, I use the on-screen keyboard a fair bit, um, rather than taking out the physical keyboard, but, and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can show this to you in, in a way that makes, that makes some sense here. Um, the on-screen keyboard doesn't really react in the same way that, say, an iPhone keyboard would or an iPod Touch or really any kind of smartphone. And it's hard to explain, but basically, as you type the keys, there's this weird sort of fade delay. Uh, I don't think that's anything that can be adjusted, but it works, but it's not exactly as sort of fast as you might think it would be. And it's difficult to put my finger on it, but I just I find it almost not disorienting, but just kind of weird when I'm using the on-screen keyboard. So um, it works. Uh, it it's decent. Um, most of the time, we don't need to reach for the on screen or reach for the physical keyboard. Um, but overall, uh, it's something that maybe Microsoft can improve in future versions of Windows to make it a little bit more uh, more touch friendly. Um, but yeah, so this has been uh, my review video of the M90Z. Uh, overall, um, uh, benchmarks are, are quite strong. Um, the uh, performance of the unit is really good uh, with 64-bit Windows. If you can access all four gigs of RAM and that 3.2 gigahertz uh, Core i5 processor, it screams. Uh, graphics performance isn't exactly stellar, but it is good enough to um, pull off. I, I would say some of the, some of the average stuff that you would uh, that you would use. Now, I want to I want to show you something that's kind of cool here, and that is uh, the screensaver. So this is actually uh, a screensaver that's built into um, it's, this. Is Essentially, there's a, uh, there's a touch pack that's been added on to the system, and this is kind of a neat effect. As you can see here, as I drag my finger across, it creates a water thing. It's multi-touch enabled, so I can do two. I don't I don't think it works with three. Yeah, it, lo it looks like two touch points is, is essentially what this supports. But um, this screensaver basically pops on, and you can see like there's there's a little fish. Um, and there's uh, water in the background, and there's birds chirping, and it's actually really cool. Uh, my son, who's a year and a half old, he loves this. He loves, you know, uh, 
tapping on the fishies to get them to swim away and stuff like that. So uh, it's a nice touch. Um, I have it set to kind of come on automatically. It's, it's, it's definitely a nice touch. If you have a touchscreen computer, you definitely want to try to get a hold of that. Um, but yeah, so the graphics performance is good enough to handle that. Um, but I wouldn't say, you know, obviously you're not going to be using this for gaming. Uh, it just has a built-in Intel uh, graphics processor and there's no way to upgrade the graphics card, of course, because this is an all-in-one system. So you're not going to want to use it for um, graphics uh, processing, um, video editing, it, it, it would work, it would work quite well because most video editing is CPU based, but largely, uh, there's definitely move towards video editors that are using the GPU and the GPU in this thing, like I said, is essentially non-existent. It's, it's a really, really weak GPU. So kind of moving forward in the future, this wouldn't be that great for video editing, but right now today with a 3.2 gigahertz quad core processor, it would be quite capable, um, of, of doing video editing today with the software that we have. So there you go. That's been my look at the, uh, Lenovo Think Center M90Z. Um, I have this unit on extended loan, so it's going to be in my kitchen, uh, you know, for a few more months here, I'll get uh, sort of more experience using it. But overall, I, I think it's really cool to have a computer in the kitchen. Something like this might be supplanted someday by some sort of like a tablet device. Because primarily, if you're looking things up online, um, you know, a, a tablet is easier to pick up and use. But on the other hand, this allows me to, you know, do things like uh, load up uh, Picasa and uh, look at all my pictures. It allows me to access everything on the network in terms of my music and my media. And those are some things that tablets are not necessarily quite as good as doing uh, when you have a full Windows 7 computer. So this has been Jason Dunn from Digital Home Thoughts. This has been my review video of the, Len the Lenovo Think Center M90. Uh, please post your questions, uh, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Oh, and also check out the uh, buy link, which will be in the video description if you're interested in getting this particular computer. Thanks for watching.